Right, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. So welcome everyone today to the webinar on Logs.io's Observability IQ Assistant. So it's going to be presented here by Spencer and Matt. Thanks, Isabella. And uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're excited, as always, to have people here to talk about what it is that we do every day in this world of observability. Uh, but of course, uh, super excited to talk a bit more about our uh, Logs.io IQ Assistant, part of our Observability IQ AI uh, strategy, which we launched a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, we'll talk a lot about uh, how this is, this incredible technology is really revolutionizing everything that we do these days, right? It's, I'm sure everybody who's here is uh, very well aware. I'm Matt, I lead product marketing here at Logs.io. Uh, been here for just, just a bit over three years. I'm um, joined by Spencer, who is our basically our head SE and technical go-to. Uh, he's been doing this for a while. Spencer, how are you today? Doing well. Uh, excited to uh, to talk about the platform. We're uh, to talk about the observability IQ and sort of like what we're doing in the platform. Uh, yeah, it's a, another beautiful day in Boston. So hard to complain. Yes. <laughs> And I've add, I've added you know for color purposes I, I added some some two wheeled uh, icons here. As Spencer is a uh, is beautiful uh, bicycle is sitting in our offices here in Boston, and my uh, sometimes beautiful motorcycle is uh, half taken apart in my garage uh, in the suburbs, and hoping to get some attention soon. But yeah, that's our we're we're kindred spirits of the two wheeled world, although um, of different packs, right, man? Yeah. So uh, just a quick agenda. We want to make this as conversational as possible today. It's one of the reasons why we're doing it live. Sometimes we record these things, but like, let's do it live because we really want to show the power of this uh, great new technology and show people what it can do as it was advertised in the roll-up and the title. We'd love to make it as conversational as possible. So, you know, there's gonna we're gonna get through some silly slides quickly, uh, have a bit of a chat, and then uh, get to the meat of the uh, conversation today, the uh, the lifeblood of it, if you would. Uh, and, and so, again, we'll be asking you there to submit questions to submit to uh, IQ Assistant, right? So please do jump in and make as interactive as possible. You can do that in the uh, Zoom interface. We also have some polls that we'll run through very quickly uh, after we uh, get rolling. So again, and Q&A at the end. So let's Again, would love to have your input. Would love to have your participation. Don't feel like if you ask one question, you can't ask another. Uh, this is uh, your time. Uh, we're grateful for it. So uh, love to make it shared time. Yeah, obligatory AI is everywhere slide here. I just felt it was, uh, you know, useful to talk about how this thing is taking over our world. Uh, uh, wildly self-promoting in the top left here uh, as we've jumped in with our, you know, we think powerful capability to help advance observability, but it's it's everywhere from, you know, becoming really the leading conversation in our space to obviously being the leading conversation in tech today. And, you know, it's everything from these incredible productivity gains that we're going to see. Uh, and like you, I'm, like myself, I'm sure a lot of you are already using it to that end. And then some of the, you know, other things, how it will transform software and tech in general, uh, the, the concerns around it, of course. And, you know, my favorite of these up here is Zoom CEO. Thank you, Zoom, who um, he maintains that pretty soon we can go to the beach because there'll be avatars to do our jobs for us. I'm all for that. We could be out on our bikes today, Spencer, if that were the case. I'm assuming that, that you might like that as well. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard conversations around that idea of, hey, maybe we'll move to 30-hour work weeks. So I'd be, uh, I'd pre I'd be pretty okay with that for sure. <laughs> Just as long as they don't put, you know, put us out the pasture, right? You know, yeah, right. Doesn't, doesn't fully retire us now. So, so that's, you know, clearly we're, we're all talking about it. We're all using it increasingly in our jobs. Love to pull in Gartner here as a point of validation. Uh, in my job, I do a lot of work with Gartner. Uh, we find them to be just a great sounding board for industry trends and what certainly end users are doing outside of our customer base. And they talk to all us vendors, so we get a great feel for sort of the step back and take a, a snapshot of what's going on across the industry. And this is a report that they came out with recently specific to our space, of course, which talks about some of the things, I won't read through all the points here on the left, they see AI as markedly affecting in the not too distant future, right? Uh, everything from change interactions like you'll see today to implementing alerts and basically at the far end, uh, starting to talk about you know self-healing, 
uh, we'll see when we get there. I think the quote, the pull quote that we grabbed here is indicative of where we are today, which is everybody's really just trying to understand how they can begin to implement this in their uh, day to day. Uh, that includes us from a platform perspective. What are the quick wins and immediate gains that we can see from all of the, you know, models that are being implemented and integrated out there. Spencer, in your work with customers day to day, what what are you hearing from folks in terms of their expectations? Yeah, I think I think when we when we think about AI and, and what AI is good at, um, analyzing data is is one of the things that AI is is, is very good at doing, right? Uh, is pro providing uh, deep level analysis in, in a very sh short amount of time. So when we talk about observability, really it, it's just large data sets that we can use to disseminate like problems that we're having in, in our environments. So naturally AI is, would, at least in the observability space, is gonna be kind of revolutionary in that regard because obviously we want to disseminate the information as quickly as possible. Uh, so in my space and, and generally when I'm talking to customers, they're really looking for something to be able to figure out what's going on as quickly as possible. Uh, I don't think people really care about how you got there. Uh, it's more about, did you find the answer um, and, and how fast did you do it? So having something like generative AI and observability is, is really what people are looking for. Um, so I think uh, really popular, maybe six, it feels like an eternity now at this point was the uh, AI ops, right? Uh, everyone was talking about AI ops and now it seems like everyone's just more looking at generative AI just in general uh with with observability yeah yeah if you want to do a deep dive or if you if you want to uh, boggle at the sheer uh volume of angles on this thing check out all the reports that Gardner's putting out and all the ai up stuff they're putting out we've talked to them a bunch and it's all it's all happening so uh we'd love to hear a little bit more about where you're at uh these days right you'll see these polls manifested in the Zoom interface, uh, but this will give us a chance to get a little bit better idea of where everybody on the call stands today. And, and again, a good place to start is what are some of your uh, biggest observability pain points or challenges, right? Cutting through huge volumes of data, responding to alerts, obviously root cause analysis is the heart of what most of us do with observability. Uh, unified observability for lack of a better term here, cross-referencing the telemetry, logs, metrics, and traces. We do, we have done our own research. Our observability pulse report this year found that uh, the shortage of skilled experts and the talent gap uh, were a serious concern for most organizations. And then for years, we've been talking about cost, right? It's been interesting to see how that's become sort of the primary uh, conversation in a lot of ways. Although we do see that shifting as people start to talk more about AI. So uh, the results are rolling in here. Uh, looks like uh, root cause analysis is uh, remains everybody's uh, primary consideration. We do see, it looks like cross-referencing observability data. Those are trending. These are multiple choice, by the way, at around 65% with uh, the talent gap and uh, data volumes uh, around 30%. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, Spen, I'm gonna end that poll and move on to the next one. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this is pretty interesting, right? Um, I think what you talked about in terms of data platforms and people needing to basically just get to the results is reflected pretty accurately here, right, Spencer, in terms of yeah, trying to get through the, try to try to bring the data together to perform root cause analysis. I'm sure that trends with what you're, what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think, yeah, getting, getting to the root of the problem and then being able to kind of understand how these systems communicate with each other. Uh, it, yeah, that pretty much aligns exactly what I was thinking. Uh, All right. Sort of what we're hearing, for sure. Let's keep it moving. Um, so the second poll, or that's number three. Sorry, I, I skipped one. Um, Uh-oh. Looks, like looks like the old system. It has a mind of its own. Poll number there you two. Go. We're showing number three on the screen, Isabella. Can we go back to number two? Sorry for the technical snafu. Thank you very much. Um, curious here. Are you already using AI for observability? Uh, and, you know, obviously there's a variance here in terms of uh, perhaps a bit or a lot or not at all. Um, yeah, again, to the to the sort of the brass tax nature of that Gardner report, most people it seems like are really just starting to experiment, uh, Spencer. That's, I'm sure, what you're hearing and seeing in your customer interactions. Yeah, I mean, I think, at least for me, right, I, I, I see AI all the time, right, in, in almost any platform or really anything that you're doing in your, in your daily life. You see, oh, use AI here, use AI there. I think it's 
and for at least for me, sometimes I challenge to I find it challenging to to accurately use it. And then you start to kind of see how people want to use it, and it's you start to say, oh wow, okay, actually I could use this for for this particular use case and things like that. So I think that's kind of why a lot of people are in that like no, and we're planning on it. It's just how do you actually implement it? Uh, and I, I think that's kind of in line with what people are doing. And I think that's kind of shared with uh, the sometimes as well. Yeah. Yeah. As someone who's ostensibly been a writer their whole career now, uh, I am uh, absolutely using chat GTP like things, not to name names, right? Uh, for certain tasks, uh, definitely not for some anything that I want to be super differentiated or unique or, you know, it's great for, um, uh, I know folks use it for writing things like ad copy, right? Anyhow, yeah, I think this tracks. We've got 67% are, are planning on it, uh, 33% are using it sometimes. And again, observability is important. So it's, you know, I think people want to make sure it's something that's really uh, accurate and meaningful uh, before they jump in too far. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get to that last poll. Really appreciate everybody's uh, um, per, our participation here. I think hopefully you could see those results. Number three. Poll number three is uh, how confident are you that AI can help you solve uh, those challenges, the ones that we talked about up top, right, uh, with root cause analysis being the uh, the leading uh, candidate as we came out of that, right? Very confident, somewhat confident, not confident, unconvinced. Should be interesting to see what people think here, right? Yeah, to me, right? Like, uh, I think it, we actually, we were just having a conversation about this with uh, some of my coworkers, right? Like engineers are the ones that are the most skeptical of AI, I feel like, um, which is kind of funny uh, because a, engineers are the ones that are building AI. So it's like kind of this weird world that we're living in where <laughs> it's being built by them, but they're also not confident necessarily that AI will, or, or at least the most skeptical. And we've even had people in our organization that um, after they saw the AI implementation that we had, they said, Oh, actually, I was wrong. This seems real. This is really cool. So, yeah, I think even our own engineers, when they first started to play around with the integrations, were skeptical. Engineers are skeptical. You know, they tend to be a skeptical crowd. That's okay. Uh, that's why we love them. No, I, I think our folks were, they thought it was going to be something cool to play around with. And they were pretty shocked at the results, especially as we started to pull around and test our own system. We launched it at KubeCon and we had people showing up in the booth and just kind of throwing random questions at it. And even we, I think, I don't know if you were there for that one, Spencer, I know Isabella was there. People were like, wow, this is pretty amazing what's happening here. And, and since then our, our engineering team has really uh, been quite impressed with what's possible. Uh, we'll see here, you know, we see here in the results that uh, most people think, you know, they're really somewhat confident. It looks like about 75% feel that they're either somewhat or very confident. So I would say that's, that's, there's a lot of interest there. Okay, let's 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 get to the let's get to the fun stuff. Really appreciate everybody's participation there. I think that was interesting. So uh, I'm going to run through some slides here really quickly, just to recap. If you haven't seen what we launched a couple of weeks ago, uh, much more excited to show it to you than to talk about it. So I'm going to go quickly here. Uh, just a reminder, in case you don't know who we are, Logs.io is a provider of a observability platform, Open360. Uh, we think it's pretty uh, interesting and differentiated on the market today in terms of, uh, you know, whether it's the AI that we'll show you today, our dedication to cost efficiency end to end. Uh, certainly, I think uh, the way that we focus on today's really modern environments, a lot of people throw the word modern around, but we're very dedicated to supporting Kubernetes microservices and ephemeral architectures. I think more than anything else here, uh, you know, I think everybody's talking about uh, cost uh, management, although we are, again, uh, from an end-to-end -end perspective, I think pretty unique. Uh, but it's, it's really supporting these modern environments that um, is critical to the folks that we support today. And if you, again, you didn't see what we launched, AQ, IQ Assistant is part of our uh, overall observability IQ strategy. Uh, which is, you can see there are two primary components here. There's both this, you know, incredible co-pilot, uh, added teammate capability that we'll show you today, which all the things that are highlighted yellow in the timeline up above are, uh, are encapsulated by that. Uh, and then, sorry, this is uh, on the other side. I didn't update the slides here. That should say IQ Insights on the right, the blue. Uh, which uh, encompasses our uh, things like our anomaly detection. We launched, launched our anomaly detection for uh, App360, which is our uh, application observability uh, approach, which is uh, an alternative approach to things like APM. 
that has uh, that has a lot of cool automated capabilities. And, you know, we've got a lot of things uh, planned uh, in terms of our roadmap there uh, around that. So, uh, yeah, here today and lots to come. And you know, there's not a lot of uh, reason for me to talk about this since we're about to show it to you. But the whole notion of, you know, what can IQ Assistant do for you from the standpoint of transitioning uh, analysis and interaction with your data from a lot of great proven processes around dashboarding, alerting, uh, drilling down on the data. Uh, we know everybody's going to continue to do that in some regard, at least for the time being. But this whole notion of being able to transition to literally a conversation with your data. And, you know, the the one that I, I was blown away, maybe it's a simple thing, but the first time I saw someone put in the chat, like they got the results and they said, this is too much data. And they put in TLDR in the machine and immediately understood that, right, in, uh, in sort of um, uh, meme nomenclature and, and, and winnow down the results. And on the far right, talking about, uh, things that you can do to try to start creating in an automated fashion alerts, like say, show me an alert that would be great to apply in this situation. So uh, with that, I will stop talking and I will hand over to Spencer for the conversational part of this. And again, please do uh, feel free to enter questions in the chat uh, to ask the system. Uh, we'd love to make this as interactive as possible. With that, Spencer, it's all yours. Oh, okay, cool. Um, awesome, thanks, Matt. Uh... I think I am sharing my screen. Uh, you can, you guys can correct me if you cannot see it. And it looks like I got some thumbs up from Matt, so we're good. You're good. So, uh, awesome. So, uh, yeah, Matt talked a little bit about our platform, right? We're a full durability platform built on log metrics traces. Uh, don't really want to get belabor that too much. Uh, really, we want to talk about the observability IQ. So, uh, I want to sort of maybe back up and, and explain a little bit about what we what we did and the how we started and uh, where we are and, and maybe where we're gonna go in the future. So we'll, we'll kind of talk through some particular examples and maybe show you like some, some cool things that we, can, that we can do with the particular platform. Um, but I maybe I'll set a little bit of context as to sort of what we're looking at and then maybe explain like how we're gonna use observability IQ to kind of you know, figure out what's going on. So in this particular case, we have this, uh, this we're looking at our app application 360 part of our platform. Not to get into it too much, but basically the idea is we're, we're looking at a, uh, a full observability data. So we're looking at logs, metrics, traces, all in one singular UI. And obviously this is sort of a, a, a pretty cool dashboard where you're able to kind of see all this information. And as a user, and as you're sort of monitoring your system and, and looking at your environment, you can probably pretty easily tell when you have an issue going on. As an example here, you can see the error ratio is starting to increase in our particular application. It's hard to see it here, but the latency is also starting to increase. That's why we're getting uh, an anomaly actually being detected in this particular service. So if we had an alert, it would bring us to this dashboard. You could probably go through here and, and be able to kind of look through the different operations and maybe figure out what's going on in the system, or maybe maybe it's something to do with my uh, infrastructure, or maybe there's something in my logs. But instead of going through this dashboard and kind of analyzing everything that's going on, what we did is we implemented something called, or we implemented the observability IQ. And the idea is we want to be able to use this to chat with your data or chat with the data to understand or disseminate this information without us going through and, and kind of looking at each individual piece. So the piece that what I, I'm going to do here is, hey, we see an increase in our environment. We see an anomaly being detected and we want to figure out where should we focus in on our application? So in this particular case, we can actually hit on, um, you know, sort of like when you when you click on the observability IQ, we have some pre-canned questions and as, that you can ask it and those types of things. Um, but one of the things that's really cool about this is that with just the click of a button and just using this generative AI, we're able to disseminate this information and figure out what do we want to pay attention to and what's changing inside of our environment. So in the case here, because I know this demo environment, because we're going to kind of focus on these particular pieces, I know that I want to focus in on the recommendation service and it's telling us that our error ratio is increasing for this particular operation and, and what we should do and, and how we should sort of analyze this particular case. And so when we look at our, our observability IQ, this was our first implementation is to take all of this sort of like metric data, tracing data, and, and sort of analyze this and to be able to kind of disseminate this information and be able to figure out what's going on in, in our environment or, or what things should we pay attention to. And, and this is sort of our first uh, look at 
what we want to do in the environment. And so what we can do is we can use this to kind of focus in on uh, particular operations. And then from there, we can investigate and figure out what's going on. We can go look at traces. We can go uh, sort of look at our environment. See here, you can see the, the latency increasing and error ratio. And we can look at individual traces and kind of figure out, hey, what's going on inside of our environment? Um, so that was our sort of first iteration and sort of how we're, how we're using uh, observability IQ in, in the beginning. Now, we're starting to implement. Uh, we're starting to implement in our into our logs as well. So it's something that one of the, if if you're newer to uh, logs IO's uh, discover page or if you're newer to logs IO in general, one of the things that we did is we actually redesigned the logging page uh, into this uh, sort of explore. So this this is sort of what we're looking at here is is our explore page. And one of the things that we can use this for is we can actually chat with our data using Observability IQ to figure out what's going on in our environment. So in the case here, um, we can use this to say like, hey, what, uh, because I know I'm using environment ID as a uh, environment ID is seeing errors in my, I don't know. You know what environment ID is seeing errors. Um, we can use this to actually chat with our data and to be able to tell us um, where we're seeing an increase in, in particular errors or we're seeing an increase in, in certain situations. So we can actually use this to uh, maybe narrow down our scope to focus in on particular errors or issues that we have in our environment. So here we can we can create new filters and we can. Um, so in this case, right, we're going to look at the environment ID of of maybe um, in this case. Uh, a particular cluster that we have in our environment. And then very quickly, what you'll see is in our observability IQ is we're actually generating a new context because we're focusing in on the data and looking at it uh, from a different context uh, of our environment. Um, so what we can do from here uh, within this particular environment ID, uh, since we know that we're focusing in on maybe the particular container of recommendation service, uh, container name, we want is recommendations because we saw that that was the operation that we saw the larger errors in. And here it's going to look at our recommendation service uh, for our particular environment. Um, maybe we want to open this up. And um, so inside of our environment, we're getting um, new context in our environment and we're able to kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, and we can use the observability IQ to kind of narrow down our scope and focus in on uh, certain things. So here I can ask it, um, maybe I want to ask it with a new context uh, of maybe, hey, help me identify unusual trends of our log data for like maybe performance issues or high scalability failures. And directly from our applications, it actually can tell us that we're actually having uh, caching issues inside of our environment. So in the case here, we're, we're looking at our environment and we're seeing unusual trends within uh, a particular uh, get product list uh, recommendations. And so we can use this to kind of ask it more questions and to be able to say like, hey, um, you know, uh, why are we getting cash misses as an example? So here we can ask a question and, we can, and it can help us to understand maybe why are we getting these cash misses? And we can use this as a sort of way to chat with our data and get something to kind of really understand our requests and maybe understand what we could do with the data to have actionable items uh, and maybe use this to to kind of add code into our environment or maybe uh, kind of work on what we want to do uh, inside the system. But as you can see here, we're using uh, we're using the data from your environment to be able to chat and see what's going on and see uh, maybe what how, how we should implement these particular uh, sophisticated situations and, and, and work with these things. So that's uh, that's another iteration in how we're sort of using observability IQ. Um, like I said, you, you, you're you going to want to kind of narrow down your scope and to be able to kind of figure out what's going on with our environment and figure out, you know, sort of what, what the what, what your issue is. And then the last place that we've added in observability IQ. Um, so we have another part of our platform called uh, Kubernetes 360. And so what I want to do is I want to focus in on a particular deployment of maybe our, let's see here, I think it was this one. 
And so here we can use it to, we can use observability IQ with our Kubernetes part of our platform. So we can actually chat with your Kubernetes data and be able to kind of figure out, hey, are we seeing issues with a deployment that we're using across our, our usage of our, our particular environment? Are there particular constraints that are happening? Um, so the idea is you can use this observability IQ to see, hey, are we having a resource issue with our applications? Or is there an issue with the node? Um, or is it more of a, a coding issue? So we've kind of sprinkled in the observability IQ into different parts of our platform. Um, and sort of, hey, Matt, is there any, I see questions coming in on the uh, yeah, sure. uh, the chat here. Is there, is there any yep. that uh, that you need me to answer or any that, uh, that are any other that, that are interesting? Well, here, here's, I mean, I think this is an interesting one. You showed it a bit, but good to review if it wasn't clear. Uh, uh, Andrew Rondo asked us, how do I enable observability IQ when viewing my logs? How do you enable it? Um, so I'm assuming you're you're a Logveo customer. Um, it should be available uh, within your account. And the the way that you would do that is you need to go to the new Explore page. Uh, so it's it's embedded in the Explore, no longer in the Open Search dashboard. So just to add a little bit of context. Uh, we used to be using Open Search dashboards. There were some uh, limitations with that. So what we did is we actually implemented our own Explore page. If you can't get to the Explore page or if, it, if it's not visible here, um, you may need to enable it in the general settings, I believe, or maybe it's enabled for everyone now. Uh, it used to be a beta program that you'd have to turn on, but it may be just enabled on everyone uh, at this point. It's still, uh, it's still being rolled out, Spencer. Uh, if you don't okay. have access to it, you can absolutely ask your dedicated account manager. They'd be happy to show you how to get it. It's going to be uh, become the default UI for log management in the next couple months, but we're rolling it out uh, and making sure that everybody's ready for that. So you'll hear more from us on that behalf for now. That's that's definitely a way to go. Here's another question. Uh, uh, it comes from uh, Hamasandar. Uh, thank you for the question. Are, are metrics, events, and logs used to train AI to get insights? I think that's a very interesting point. When metrics, events, and logs are used to train AI to get insights. So um, the, I guess the question is more of like, is the data correlated to, to generate uh, sort of insight? So as it stands right now, uh, the observability IQ and how we're sort of using it today is it is more focused on the particular visualization that you're looking at. So in this case, right, I could say, can you, I don't know, can you create uh, an alert or help or what alert should I create for the caching issue? Um, so the idea is here, maybe uh, you could use uh, observability IQ to maybe cue you in on particular uh, maybe cases that you want to do. Um, and I, maybe this is the bad example of, of what you could do, but here maybe uh, this is telling you to maybe create an alert and name it uh, recommendations calf mission high rate metric count. And then basically maybe count the number of logs uh, of this particular operation cache missed and uh, generate some type of alert from there. So uh, the idea is that you can use the observability IQ as sort of like an assistant to, at least today, it's more of an assistant to do some more of like reactive work to be able to kind of chat with the data. Uh, as it stands right now, we're not really um, aggregating all of this data and, and pushing it out um, uh, we're not correlating all the different data sources as it stands today. The observability IQ is, is sort of like a separate instance uh, of each data source. So if you're in the observability, uh, or if you're in the explore page, you're going to be looking at just the log data. If you're in the uh, application 360 part of the platform, you're going to be looking at the application 360 data um, or Kubernetes data, those types of things. So it's kind of in its own separate instance as it stands today. I hope Here, here's an interesting. Yep. Uh, here's an interesting one, Spencer, uh, um, in terms of this, this is, uh, it, it aligns with our business and certainly anybody who's using uh, uh, generative AI, AI integrations or, you know, again, sourced models. But the question is, uh, what are the costs involved with supporting the observability IQ, right? And certainly that's 
big consideration for any organization like ours where uh, we have a strategy. We're being um, very mindful of this. But yeah, Spencer, how would you uh, what, what would your response to that be? Yeah, so uh, cost is always always a, a fun discussion um, in, in sort of doing this. So as it stands today, uh, we're not charging our customers anymore to use the observability IQ. Um, we are sort of enabling this for all the customers to be able to kind of leverage this in, in your environment. We've had, we actually, believe it or not, we actually just had a, uh, a sort of like hackathon with trying to leverage uh, observability IQ or just AI, just in general. Uh, within the organization, and one of the things that uh, I think one of the one of the topics that somebody came up with was the idea of like, hey, can we use AI for customers to identify maybe uh, you know what was your largest data set, or you know what are are we seeing noisy data? So trying to be able to use observability IQ to maybe help us understand are we sending data that we don't really need, and maybe we can maybe we can drop it, and then part of Part of what we can do within within Logs.io is we, we have some, uh, we, we call it the data hub, but we have a whole part of our platform that's focused around saving money uh, for customers to maybe drop data, unused data, and those types of things. Um, so to answer your question, I, I think Observability IQ will can help maybe identify maybe what the highest rate of particular, I mean, maybe I could try it instead of talking about it. Here we go. Honest, I haven't tried it, so we'll fingers see. crossed. <laughs> see what we get. I'm told if you ask it to bake a cake, it'll politely decline. Yeah, right. Um, if I could spell container right, uh, container is producing the most logs, and maybe maybe it'll tell me the right answer. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Love it. We're rolling um, the dice, folks. Yeah, it's right. Learning as, we're learning as we go. Here you go. Let's see the highest count volumes blah, blah, blah. based on the graph data provided. The container producing the most log highest count of each time. Yeah. So, so it looks like we got a general answer here, as opposed to yeah, it seems one. to be a general yeah. answer. Um, maybe I have to narrow the scope to maybe like one particular environment or something. Let's see. Uh, let's just pick this environment ID. Oh. Maybe say, um, maybe I have to say which it's container. Sorry for producing um, log. Maybe this would be a little bit more specific. I don't know. It's always fun to try different things. Um, so yeah, here, uh, it's there telling is. us that based on my Kubernetes namespace of uh, cube system, and it looks like the EKS node agent seems to be producing the most amount of logs. Um, yeah, so maybe I could use this to maybe narrow down my scope. Maybe I want to, you know, maybe copy this and, and see is this, uh, no, that's not going to be a good example of copying and pasting. Um, but yeah, so maybe I could use this to uh, to focus in on a particular container and say, okay, well, maybe this is my largest data set. Maybe I need to focus in on uh, removing this uh, from my uh, from my environment. So here I can I can look at the uh, Kubernetes load node uh, and say, uh, I don't know, maybe you say, is there a repeating? Are there repeating? messages. I mean, I know that there's repeating messages because I can see them, but um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, here it's telling me that, hey, uh, we're getting a lot of repeating messages. So maybe I could uh, maybe I could build this in and create a drop filter and remove this from, from being ingested to the platform because it looks like I have a million of these logs coming in uh, compared to a lot of other uh, a lot of other uh, data sources. So I don't know. That's just one example, but uh, maybe you could use this to to figure out what's going on in your environment to, to kind of cut down on that volume. We're uh, we're we're churning through our time here, but definitely still open. Uh, if anybody has any other questions they want to affect here in the chat, would love to uh, get more of those. Uh, here's one that came in. Our colleague Tyler passed this along from someone who sent it in. Uh, can the system show me my list of active alerts and their status? Um, I'm not sure if the AI could do that. 
Let's see. Do I have any active alerts? Oh, but maybe because I am not looking at the right context. Let me try this again. Um, do I have any active Be honest, I haven't tried this one. So, observability data, it looks like there's no active alerts uh, based on the log. The metrics attend uh, are normal. So, I think right now, um, if you want to see active alerts and, and what's happening, you probably would want to go to the home page and here. This is where you can see uh, maybe the active alerts that are uh, occurring in the system if there are any. Um, so, that I don't think the observability IQ can really do that yet. Um, that's sort of my initial thought. So uh, good question. Um, and something maybe I could uh, bring it up with product, talk about uh, yeah. how that would work. Well, fair product managers are watching this. Uh, here's another, and here's another question for them, right? And as a product marketer, I should know the answer, but I but I do not. Uh, Martin DeRosa asks, uh, can we use the AI assistant via API? I don't think so. Yeah, I guess the, the question would be, yeah. how, how do you plan to use it with the AI? Um, I, I think right now uh, it's only going to be in the UI or it's only going to be in the UI. So I, I would be curious to understand how you'd want to use it with the API um, and sort of how that would even work. I, I think uh, it's an interesting angle though, right? One of the uh, AI ops experts that we were speaking to from Gartner was, is pretty far down the road with this stuff. And he was talking a lot about the uh, integrations, the ecosystem, right? How people or organizations or end users will be looking to integrate various AI capabilities across their platforms, right? To create sort of an end-to-end -end approach and certainly triggering things like workflows and your ITSM systems and ticketing uh, is another big step forward with the stuff. So uh, I think that's sort of maybe what Martin was, uh, maybe that's direction to interact with internal systems, example, Slack bots. It's a great idea. Uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're there yet. Right. So um, good for yeah, I think thought. that, yeah, I mean, I think that brings up a kind of like an interesting thought of process about like, so like right like our, our observability IQ right now is is uh is more context based right like you have to have a particular context that you want to do it it's it's sort of uh, as we call it like the boring way of saying like a reactive sort of assistant to be able to kind of help you diagnose maybe what's going on. I think in the future, uh, if you if you talk to some of our product managers uh, that kind of are building these things, they they talk about hey maybe dashboards and maybe uh, those types of systems will become obsolete. And really all you're doing is you, you have this all the data going in and you just basically say, hey, is it healthy? Is it not? Where do we have issues? And how can we kind of fix those issues? So I don't know whether it's a year or two years down the road or you know that, that type of system. So I, I think in the short term, uh, the way the observability IQ is really gonna work is is at least in this in this first iteration, right? Like we it's very reactive. We're kind of fig figuring out that context, but in the future, it'll be, hey, build, uh, maybe it'll use a visualization to be able to show you how how, how this, this data is working or or it'll have more context built inside of it. So be able to provide a little bit more insight, those types of things. So um, I think it's really exciting and really cool the way, you know, sort of the direction this is going. But uh, yeah, good. good yeah, our good VP of product, that. our VP of product, David Latan Bolotnikov, uh, and I hopefully I didn't butcher, butcher that, is uh, he's joined our organization in the last year and he's got a ton of background in generative AI and we have a roadmap, we've got a vision, things like uh, early warning system driven by, you know, I know there's some, there's a question I saw come in around anomaly detection, we didn't get to it. Uh, lots of interesting uh, implications here. Uh, we are coming up, we had a question about how do we, what do we do when observability IQ can't find the information that I find with the old UI? I suspect that the answer there would be continue to interact with our old UI for the time being. Spencer, any any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, if, if you can find it with the old UI, you should be able to find it with the new one. Um, with the new UI, we do have the ability to use Lucene or uh, we have that new smart query language. Uh, smart query language is really just uh, building the filters in, into the UI. Um, but really the Lucene query uh, 
if you can build it with the Lucene query, you should be able to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, you should be able to find that uh, within the search that you're doing. And if, uh, if, you, if you need help doing that, uh, I encourage you to kind of reach out to either uh, our support team in the chat um, and, or maybe reach out to uh, your customer success engineer or something like that. So they may have some yes. more context as to how that works. Thanks, Andrew. Looks like you've got that mindset already. So uh, let us know how to help you do that. Uh, really grateful for all the questions that have come in. Uh, I think we had a couple more questions, kind of uh, general questions that we wanted to address here because they're important. Spencer, thank you as always for being our go-to product expert. Uh, I learn every time I see you interact with the system and it's exciting. Uh, so yeah, always grateful for your help with the uh, with the demo here. Sweet. Yeah, of course. I uh, really appreciate it. I uh, love being able to talk about the platform. Obviously, uh, I uh, live and breathe this stuff, so I talk about it all the time. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the time to uh, kind of talk to, to a wider audience and uh, show what we can do. And, and I'm really excited to see where we go from here. And we want your Hopefully. feedback. Yeah, that's yeah. the other thing, right? If you're using Observability IQ Assistant and you're finding cooler, interesting things or obstacles to using it better. We want to hear from you. Obviously, this is all about uh, enabling our customers at the end of the day. So uh, we did have one more question from a gesture in terms of do we need to enable this? Will it automatically enable once it rolls out? Uh, it is the latter. You will see it show up as it already is now. You can see here in the Explorer uh, interface, uh, it's showing up in Kubernetes 360 and App360. If you're using those components of the platform, uh, you'll see it there. And then uh, there are plans to roll it out more broadly across the system. If you aren't seeing it today, it might it's, it's likely because you haven't uh, enabled Explore yet. Uh, but again, uh, please uh, ref confer with your dedicated customer account team, and they'll be happy to uh, help you do that. Uh, Spencer, do we want to cut back to the deck here? I know we had some questions. The the interface isn't uh, you know isn't as I don't you know I don't even know that we need to well for the for the for the sake of uh, consistency I'll. I'll go back to our uh, our, our handy uh, slideware here, if the uh, if the system will let me. Um, there we are. Uh, so so some quick questions. Uh, Isabella, do you want to let us know? I know we had some questions that came in before the uh, the show today that were again they're a little bit more uh, you know kind of business and process oriented. Yeah, so we had a question that came in asking what kind of models are you using? Important. You're and I muted myself, you, sorry. There you uh, are. Yeah, yes. so, uh, yeah, so we're using uh, AWS's Bedrock uh, as our sort of like model or for our like implementation of the generative AI. Um, so we are not using uh, open AI or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, if you have any particular questions about that, I, I think we have an FAQ page. Maybe I can attach this to the chat. We do. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find a lot of information in our docs yeah. about yeah. some of the stuff. Uh, the next question, I think, as well. And yeah, we're deeply engaged with AWS. Uh, you know, again, we, we're huge contributors to open search and uh, we have a longstanding partnership with AWS. So we are uh, working closely with them and a lot of other software vendors to uh uh, to help advance their capabilities as well. I'm excited to be a part of that. Isabella, I think I think the next question was our classic uh, uh, security, privacy, and safety one, correct? Yep. How are you handling the privacy and security considerations exactly? Yeah, important stuff. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool. So we're uh, the AI uh, model is uh, we're, we're not training it for all of our, like it's uh, it's actually your own separate instance that we're, we're uh, we're doing this deployment. So it's not going to be, so as an example, if it's customer A and customer B, we're not training the model across all the different customers. You would have your own separate instance of this uh, of this generative AI. So uh, there's no training among the different uh, members or the different applications. Uh, so it's really cool uh, that it's able to kind of stay in its own uh, field and you can use this to continually uh, expand upon your, uh, your particular knowledge and, and go through those pieces. All that's laid out in the FAQ. Our legal team has been very studious in making sure that uh, any questions you might have are uh, addressed there. If you have additional questions, of course, always follow up. We do. I do we just put a finishing finishing touches on a blog post that will go out about this shortly in terms of our 
uh, very mindful approach to all this. Uh, before we tie off, Isabella, was there one other question that we had? Yep. So the last one that we got beforehand was, are you using this as a trained model, aka sharing data across customers? Yeah, I think I already answered that one. So um, the answer is no, obviously. Um, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. Right. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Isabella. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Uh, it's been It's been fun. Thanks, Spencer. Yeah, awesome. And of course, if we didn't answer your question, we'll be sure to reach out to you. And if any other questions arise, feel free to reach out to team at logs.io and we'll be sure to get back to you. All right. Have a great awesome. day, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye.